Welcome to the channel. My name is Ama. To others who know me, you know my bio, uh, my birth name. All right. So I welcome each and every one of you. And for those of you who do not know, I am an African American. I have been visiting the continent of Africa um, for more than 21 years. I have lived in Ghana and Togo and um, have an extensive experience with Ghana. And so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, some things that normally I would not discuss on this channel. Okay. And um, uh, please know if you're new to the channel or if you've been on here for a while, you should know that I am not a messy person. I'm not a controversial person. Controversial person. I will speak about topics that a lot of people do not want to speak on. I will uh, give you the plain truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat things about situation on the situation on ground in Ghana. What you see here in the background is actually, uh, let me just say this, a clip from uh, me riding through Tema. Tema has uh, 26, some say 27 communities in greater, greater Accra, which is outside of Accra. Um, and I'm riding right now through the 25, 26 Dewinia area, right? So that's just going to give you um, a little view while I'm speaking on this topic, right? It also helps you to see that all of Ghana is not the same, okay? And you do have options. Um, you can move to other regions. You can move outside of Accra and still be in a well-developed area. Um, and this video is also going to show you the dynamics. One minute you can be on pavement and the next minute you're going to be, you know, bouncing along a dirt road. Okay. So let that play while I'm talking to you about something very important that impacts all of us. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the great things that are going on in Ghana and how it's being slandered. And um, there has been a recent video done by a person who is African born um, of African parents, as she says in her video. And uh, she has uploaded a video that I believe is causing a lot of damage. Okay, so I will uh, make mention of some things that were said in that video. Um, and I will also pinpoint um, the subject that I was supposed to come and speak on about a couple of weeks ago because it kind of goes together. All right. In fact, it goes together. So let me start with the great news again. Wonderful things are being done in Ghana by the diaspora. When I say diaspora again, I'm speaking about the, the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and also those who have been away from the continent. I do not consider them to be diaspora when I'm speaking. I consider them to be Africans who have been abroad for some uh, extended period of time. The diaspora is typically those who are descendants of the transatlantic slave trade who have been sent to various places such as Central America. America, South America, the North America, North America, uh, including Canada, um, also uh, the islands of the sea, you know, Jamaica, Barbados, everywhere, okay, and the UK, which is often left out. And so I speak on things that, you know, shed, I would hope, shed lights on some issues that impact us on and off the continent. And so in recent uh, weeks, NPR did a uh, write up about what's going on in the central region. And they stated, uh -huh, they stated that African Americans are moving to Ghana and taking land from the local people. All right. And they used some information, half truths. OK, I'm going to speak about that. Hold on for those of you who are ready to click off. And I'm also going to speak on some envy that is causing some problems. There's some success going on among African Americans who are building businesses and, you know, uh, really working the thing. All right. They're doing their thing and having great success. And some people who are local who are trying to get into those same industries because they weren't, um, you, you, have been saying things about uh, them that are not true and not pleasant. So I will address that as well. And then I will address the woman who has said some horrible things um, in response to um, a, a retreat that was taking place, I think this weekend or sometimes this sometime this month. Okay. And so I'm going to address all of them because they're quite dangerous, quite dangerous for this type of rhetoric to be spread across the internet. So if you're interested in really hearing um, this, then hang in there. Okay. All right. So 
first thing, NPR says that African Americans down in Acebu are getting free land and taking the land away from um, the locals. Well, for those of you who do not know, um, there is a project that was presented by the Paramount Chief of the uh, Central Region, a Cebu area of the Central Region, and the President of Ghana, Republic of Ghana, has also approved it. And this program is not, let me first say, free. There was never any free land given away. I think the first cost that people paid was around $750 for one plot of land. Okay, and it, it was purchased by not only African Americans, but those from the Caribbean, those from the UK, and from by Africans on the continent, even those in the central region. In fact, most of the properties that have uh, not been cut nothing has been done to it many of those properties have been purchased by africans and the truth of the matter is a lot of them rushed and purchased with hopes to flip that property meaning get it low buy low and sell high and so this is something that needs to be addressed in my opinion um, by the uh, pan-african village association i think they really and the chief i think they really need to start recalling some of that land from people who um, have had more than two years to develop it and they have not done anything with it the agreement was that they would do something within two years okay now to the people who are out there sweating and doing things and employing people and uh, giving back to the community supporting those who are giving back to the community you know shout out to you guys and salute to you all in fact this video that you're seeing right here i originally recorded this saying great things about some of the things that you guys are doing but i had to now re-record on top of this to discuss this issue all right so what has been said by some people who want to get into the industry it's obvious that there's some envy about the income that some of our people are making I'm not for cheating anyone. I'm not for overcharging anyone. But if people are providing a service, then um, they I do believe that they have a right to be paid. And so what are, I wanted to share with our, our friends and uh, some of our cousins on the continent. Not everyone is our cousin. That's another thing that we need to understand, that there are various tribes on this continent. All right. And so um, we as descendants of the uh, the children of Israel, which we are, if you don't know, of the tribes of Judah, Benjamin and Levi scattered to the four corners of the earth, as the scripture says. All right. What we need to know is that um, there are people there who are not pleased with us working together. And what we want them to understand that this is a big thing for us. This is something that we have been you know, hoping to see us working together, building together, because in the U.S. we don't have this opportunity. In the in times past, any effort that we made to work together has always been attacked, and I do mean attacked. If you do not know, there has the only time in U.S. history where the United States approved to bomb itself from the air has been the bombing of what we now call Black Wall Street. Okay, where there was an approval and order sent out to bomb all of the businesses, black owned businesses, black owned car dealerships, banks, hospitals, everything that was black owned except the church. Bomb it from the air, fire bombs, and they did. And so this was an effort to stop us from working together this was an effort to say anything you guys do we are going to squash it we're going to stop it there have been times where farmers hundreds of farmers have been killed while they met in a meeting to discuss um, farming because they were so successful and they were in a building and people came in with shotguns and slaughtered them Okay, now some of them were able to get out and fight back, but the slaughter they took to the town and the people took the slaughter to the town and, and just continued to slaughter the African-American people in those towns. Okay, and what was the reason? Their success, their success. So when you see us coming back to the continent and we are working together, this is a big achievement for us. Okay, and so I want you to understand it's not with the purpose of excluding you. In fact, I only see inclusions. I see African Americans and, and Caribbean hiring people. I see them employing people. I see their their staff is mostly the local people there. Local, not only mostly, 
in some cases, all of the people who work for the people, um, for the African diaspora that are there are people who are local people, who are Ghanaian people, who are Sierra Leoneans, who are um, Nigerian, who are Gambian, who are, you know, whatever country they're in. And then sometimes in, in some countries, they have people from multiple nations that are working for them. So to say that we're not willing to work with anyone and that we are, you know, segregist, that's another thing. Okay, let's let's move on to that is not true. But the first thing that bothered me is that they were saying that we were not peaceful and that is far from true and welcoming. One of the things that you will find if you ever make it to the United States and if those of you who have lived in the United States is that some of the neighborhoods that you move to, most people move to when they come to the United States are neighborhoods that are predominantly um black neighborhoods okay and those are the places that they come to those are the places that they're allowed to live and no one bothers them those are places that they're allowed to you know put up businesses and no one bothers them so to, to make such a statement I find it to be not only a lie but uh, it's very very deceptive okay because one of the places that you will be able to come and do business is in what is so-called the black community all right so um, give me just a moment I'm trying to fix this screen here just one moment okay thank you for your patience so one of the places that you would be able to come and do business is in the black community and no one will bother you the only thing that we don't like is for you to come and think you're better than us but what we find is that when immigrants come particularly from Africa they they you know group up according to their own people and there's nothing wrong with that so why is it that some people are having problems with our people working with one another? Okay, this is, a, like I said, a major accomplishment for us, and I encourage us to continue to do that. All right, so let me move on to the comments that I think were most um, destructive. I think it was most deceitful and totally unnecessary. Um, recently, and it's a channel that I'm just, uh, subscribed to, um, but I don't, I haven't said anything much on that channel. In fact, I don't think I've ever said anything. Maybe I have. Um, and I've noticed that, um, and, I, and there's a reason for it, um, that there has been a video that has been circulating, right? And let me just say this. One of the main reasons is I don't say a lot on a lot of channels, okay? I usually just watch and observe, okay? And um, take notes and learn and, you know, like and so on and so forth. But there has been a video that a woman from Congo who lives in Ghana has uploaded. And in that video, she is offended because that is the problem. She is offended. And as a result of her offense, she has slandered a group of people that I don't even know. I don't know anything about them. I don't know anything about her conference. I don't know the conference that they had or a retreat. And I'll explain that. But I do know based on the information that she put out that she was at, she came across the truth, right? And had the opportunity to go back and remove that video and also upload one to correct her error. And she hasn't right and since then she has started another discussion and uh you know you can't go back and bring other people in and then say i'm trying to get more understanding after seeing some of the most horrific things about a people and so let me just say this let me start with what slander is okay what is slander what is slander okay so Slander. It says the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. All right. That's what slander is. Okay. Now, and, and I'm going to tell you how I believe that she has done this. Okay. Secondly, I'm going to read the book of Hebrews, just a second a section of it. Hebrews chapter 12. And it says in verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fall of the grace fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled all right so this woman has been troubled right and as a result of her trouble 
she has defiled many with her words. So let me kind of give you a little background. She um, filled out a form to attend a convention and a retreat, all right? A retreat in the uh, Elmina area of uh, Central Region, uh, Cape Coast Region of Ghana. And so the retreat was for women of the diaspora. And the flyer for that retreat, which she did not get, she says later that she didn't get the flyer, says that it is a retreat that is a pull-out retreat. Basically, there's a conference that's going to be held for all people from the diaspora, regardless of, you know, where you are from. And I'm sure Africans who are continental can also uh, attend. But if you were African-born and you lived abroad anywhere, you can attend if you are totally born from another country, born in another country and have no connections um, to the African continent that you know of and you're returning or you're coming here as the first time or you're visiting and you want to meet with people just like yourselves and share your experiences as the first generation on the continent, share the good, the bad, the ugly, assist with, you know, things that can be done to uh, make your ease, uh, your, your stay on the continent easier and better. That was a, a retreat that they were having, a special pullout retreat, which they have all the time all over the world. Well, anyway, she applied for that and she didn't hear from it. She then says that she spoke with one of her friends who told her that they got information, you know, about the retreat, but she didn't. So she says she contacted the people and they told her that they voted that she cannot attend and that um, Africans cannot attend. And those were her words. But I knew then that she was lying. And I say lying because she wasn't telling the whole truth. And I'm sure that they gave her more of an explanation. Okay. Either you're saying the truth or you're not. Okay. And when you're not saying the full truth and you know what the full truth is, that would be a lie. Okay. With the intent to mislead. And so I am sure being an African-American, I know that we are one of the most welcoming people. And especially in America, we are the most welcoming. You will find no other group of people more welcoming for people from anywhere in the world coming to live in their in their communities than us and so for someone to say such a thing I knew that it was off okay secondly to say that we're not peaceful people I knew that that was off as well someone else said that at another time but she goes on to say that we are trying to start plantation that we are you know separating ourselves that we need to integrate and there's no need for us to have our own pullout organizations and so on and so forth now she goes on and picks up three Three other women who are from the Caribbean and I think one from America she says but I'm not sure okay and then they go on to read the actual flyer remember I don't know any of these people and the flyer says that it is a special retreat for those people who are new to the continent who want to get together and so on and so forth well the the focus now becomes on African Americans and they begin to say that we are you know uh, always complaining that we are separating ourselves we are like Liberia we the ones who started Liberia we want to be the elite and that we come with our airs and our graces thank you very much for the compliment and so on and so forth just mean unnecessary things and stirring up those who are listening to them and so my response to that is that because of a party because of a retreat that was not focusing on her only. It was a special retreat. The flyer even said everyone is welcome to the conference, but this is a special retreat to help those who are new to the continent basically get accustomed to life on the continent and help and support one another. Okay. And I am so proud of our sisters for working together. I don't even know who they are, but I think this is wonderful. And the, they go on to say, even in that video, the other women that next year that they are planning to let everyone come, but this or they're having a separate one that can include everyone. But right now, this one is just for that group. And, you know, they, she uploaded a second video and it, it started out with something like we need to explain why we're here and it, it's, it's just a whole lot of confusion but what I want to say guys is I want to encourage our people to continue to work together. I want to encourage you to continue to love one another. I want to con encourage you to continue to support one another. And, you know, it is sad that someone would take their personal offense that is not even directed towards them and spew such hatred on the Internet. But I would encourage us to to pay attention to what we hear. 
those of you who are diaspora and those of you who are not just really pay attention to what you hear and judge all things and know the people that you, that there that the person is speaking of and see if that has been your experience with them overall okay and if it has been your experience have you taken the time to get to know them because the same person who says that we need to integrate actually she herself is a member of a uh a Congolese uh, association here in Ghana where she actually spends time alone with her members of her Congo uh, community they spend time with just themselves so why is it that we as a people have to uh, not separate ourselves we as a people cannot get together with one another and support one another why is it that everything that we do has to be open to everyone why can't we have a time of healing and a time of strengthening one another okay if you are in Ghana and you're telling us that we should not have a pullout group why are you a member according to your own uh, channel a member of the Congolese Association of Ghana is not a pullout group and any group that comes to America any African group that comes to America they all have their own associations they have their own meetings they have their own gets together get together not just in America but in UK in Spain in wherever they are they work together they end up moving together they don't even for the most part spend time with people outside of their own community except that they're Caucasian let's just say the drill most often they are spending, if they spend time with anyone outside of their own group, is going to be with Caucasians. And that's a fact. And I speak as a person who has attended an African church in America and in Ghana. I know a lot about it. I, like I said, I've had 21 years experience on this continent and most of it in Ghana. Okay, so I think that I can speak the truth and not only speak it, but I, I know I could speak the truth, but speak it with authority and with knowledge of what is going on. And so I think it's very, very sad that um, this woman did not go back and, and pull that video. In fact, during the time when the woman in the back seat was reading the, the flyer, there was some editing of her video going on to say that we are. Liberia you need to do some research on who really started the problem in Liberia in fact who founded Liberia was the American Colonization Association it was never a the intent originally to bring African Americans to to uh, Liberia to start their own country it was with the sole intent to colonize Africa using us that's all the same thing with Sierra Leone so please research before you 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 send out this rhetoric all right and that's for everyone not just for her and those of you who are listening to those people educate yourselves as well and so please understand what's going on with us we are loving ourselves as the scripture says that we would do in the last days that they will know that you are my disciples because you have love one toward another and we are our brothers keepers and we and sisters keepers and we are helpers one to another and not only that we are also welcoming those who are on the continent to be a part of us but let us let us help ourselves as well and let us embrace you but we won't embrace people that that hate us not even on the sly because all of the things that this woman said this was built up in our heart we're supposed to trust someone like that we're supposed to trust that you mean well that you really want a fellowship with us when you refer to us as uh, plantationists that we complain all the time and that uh, we are here to set up our own uh, we uh, uh, separatist communities and why do we need our own communities I think it's great that we have our own communities I actually think they need to be gated and have a homeowner association because if you've lived in this Ghana for any time in gated communities especially you know that you need a good homeowner association to protect the value of your property to protect um, just your interests we don't have a lot of money and we don't have any family that we can run back to in the village so if this is going to be it excuse me if this is going to be it we're going to need it to be taken care of as best as possible so are we peaceful people we are absolutely peaceful people but we're very transparent people and we're direct people as well we're very patient but when you push that patience too far okay then we just have to come out and let you know we see all right we hear we know and we're not gonna deal with it we'll just walk away from you all right we'll say what we have to say and then we'll walk away 
the noise that you hear may be my mic making noise too all right and so please ignore that so i just want to say guys let's walk in love let's grow in fellowship with one another but give us the respect that you give the chinese you don't tell the chinese why are they separating themselves why are they working with themselves you don't tell the chinese why do you have to you know have private meetings you don't tell the the Lebanese that you don't tell the Arab that you don't tell the Turkey the Turkish that you don't tell the Egyptians that so why is it that um, anything that we're doing to support one another because we charge a service fee we are willing to pay that service fee to one another because we understand where we're coming from we understand where we're going and we understand what we want and we can communicate that thing with each other well and so if the person falls short we're gonna hold them more accountable because they have no excuse for not understanding us and understanding what we want okay and we have done a great job with working with local people and will continue to do so and I have to say that this problem most of it is not coming from local people it's coming from people who have lived in the diaspora people who don't even associate with us when they are abroad plain and simple they don't even associate with us okay and so I feel like there's a little bit of jealousy if not a lot of jealousy there especially with statements like they they are the as if they are the elite I think because maybe we are getting attention that maybe people who have been away 20 and 30 years feel that they should also get and maybe they're not getting it and they feel that we are getting attention special attention that, that they too are worthy of I don't like a lot of attention so it's okay with me you can have mine all right but what I'm saying is that we should we should really really respect one another and build sincere relationships sincere relationships and do not allow bitterness to come springing up out of you because all it does is trouble your own soul but what you also do is defile others all right and so that's all I have to say on that I'm not gonna be arguing with anyone I don't do arguments and in, in internet battles okay um, I'm gonna to continue to share and what I'll do is share some of the great things that people are doing on the continent that's my answer continue to share in fact I already have a long playlist of people who are doing great things on the continent and I have it on private so I guess now is the time to start to feature these people I just don't come out and say things um, I like to watch people to make sure that they are staying you know as much on the path as I can see but anyone that I post is up to anyone that sees it to do their own due diligence to see if this is someone they want to work with or if things are as it is has been advertised okay so y'all bless you all to my brothers and sisters celebrating a, a Shabbat have a wonderful 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 Shabbat y'all bless you I love you all and Shalom